Welcome to episode three of the Tap Haven Podcast. I am your host, Eric, and with me are my two co-hosts, Anthony and Nat. Welcome. How are y'all doing this week? Oh my god, he's going Super Saiyan. I know, right? Went all out there. I'm doing okay. Doing okay. I'm a little sick. Oh no. One of my good? one of my good friends actually got pneumonia this past week. Oh no. Funnily enough. I, I not funnily enough. Ooh. I ran a I ran a little marathon chasing my dogs through the mountains today. And when I told my wife, oh man, I can taste the blood in my lungs. I was like, what the fuck? Do you need to go to the hospital? Yeah, I'm that's like, no, it's just that's, it's just blood in my lungs. And she's like freaking out. And I'm like, sweetheart. You know what? I feel like you're in the wrong here. track. I can taste the blood in my lungs. Oh my gosh. That is normal. Not normal. Anthony. It is normal. Not normal. Anthony. Not normal. It is normal. I you know, that disagree. Thing where, uh, what was it? What show was it where it said not okay? <laughs> that is not okay. <laughs> Remember that old, uh, there was an old YouTube skit from the early 2000s that had a guy talking ooh, like ooh. with the piano. Right. Yeah, he's like, cool. Yeah, that's like, All right. All right. Not, cool. not, not my right. real dad. Yeah. yeah. Not my real dad. You'll yes. find Ooh. me. <laughs> Can't oh, call man. Dad calls for help. Oh, get, 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 get up, mom. Oh. So that was good. a classic and YouTube. Then he got off it saying not okay. That's where it's from. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I showed that to my grandparents once. Bad decision. Oh my gosh. You're, you're they did not understand. Right. Here. They did not understand. Ooh. I don't think they They're grew like, up with YouTube. We're supposed to beat you, right? Oh wow, it's <laughs> a great conversation starter. Oof. So, uh, so uh, what are we tasting today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Quick so segue. this last week, of course, everybody knows we we tried out the the cast the forty six cast strength to mm. kind of like top and come full circle. We wanted to kind of see what the 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 general audience product of the 46 was so this week we have the regular uh maker's mark 46 very similar bottle style albeit with the cream colored label instead of the red label um now this is the exact same uh mash bill as the cast strength so again you're looking at that 70 percent corn 16 percent uh red winter wheat which is what um i have a question yeah for cask strength that's still a mix though isn't it it's not a um single barrel right so it it, it can still be a mix so the cask strength really just has to do with the proofing and they aren't adding water after mm -hmm. they take it out of the barrel to deproof it down to whatever their normal product is. So for example, the 46 runs at 47% alcohol by volume and the cast strength is sitting at uh 109, so 54.85% alcohol by volume. That's a strong ass alcohol right now. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. What is the proof on yours? So the cast strength? 109.7. So We're, these are, are different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're going to see a little bit different. One. I do have the limited edition one. Um, now, oh, I will say, uh, I'll, I'll look it up real quick. Um, some, uh, some actually do just pull it out of the bottle and it, cast strength can be very similar to a single barrel. However, I don't believe that is the case for Maker's Mark 46. Um, but I am not 100% sure. You better fucking look it up, Eric. I, I know, I'm, I'm looking. Well, I feel uh, like if it was Eric. single barrel, they would want to say, right? They would want to brag about that. Usually, barrel, usually they would. The, usually the they would Eric. say that. Now, I am assuming that this is not a single barrel. This is a blend of multiple of their barrels 
where because it's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, we're looking at a minimum barrel age of four years. Yeah. Um, and they're blending those, but they're not adding water afterwards and deproofing them. Whereas the one that we're trying today, the regular 46, has water added after they take it out of the barrel and blend it and is deproofed. So what we're probably going to notice is that this is going to be a little bit lighter in color. And I'm the, I, I like Anthony, I'm going to pour both the cast strength and the regular to kind of give a side-by-side -side comparison. And I can see just kind of in the, in the, um, in the bottle that we have, oh no. Oh, he poured too much. No. Oh no, it's far worse. What did he do? Miss? No, my uh the 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 top of Ooh. my cork oh, no. came off here. That's tragic. <laughs> oh no, quality control issue right here. Maker's mark. Yeah. Am I gonna be able to get you know, this out? I don't know what bourbon it is, so I'm not gonna say who I think it is, but there was a bourbon where I kept getting them over and over again. Man. And the cork would fall apart and flake into the bourbon yeah. and it was disgusting That's and gross. i'm what's weird is i'm not sure if it's still no. the same one because i think i got a new one and they did a different cork and what's really weird is eric i have no cork on mine yeah mine are just it's because he it's because he has the special edition it's because i have the special edition. yeah oh was that your yeah that was your super one this is the limited the, edition 46 cast strength and, and that one broke? Yeah, and the, the cap, it looks like, if you, if you look at this, there's a, a, let's see if I can get the camera. To, you see that oh, glue no. layer? Oh, no. There's no glue on that. I know, oh, but no. that, that white layering right there is glue, and it looks like they had That's it glued. Glue right there. You, can, you can see at the top right here. Let's see if that'll focus. Oh, man. A cover. Oh. Yeah, right there. Oh, that's super nice. <sighs> they, they, that's super swell. Yeah, it just the glue came right off. It looks like. It sounds like you need a wrench. Yeah, I might have to go get a wrench to open this bag, bad boy. All this really cool thing where you're like eating at a fine dining restaurant or something like that. It was like a YouTube short, mm. and the Mitra D or whatever you call them, that was he was he had a torch or something like some sort of fire contraption and he had these crazy looking tongs that had like a perfect little circle to go around your wine bottle and he, he lit it up and he, he put it around the bottle here and there and he was taking his time being very elegant like a magician mm -hmm. and then he just pops the glass off the bottle and has a perfect cut and it's cut just above where the end of the cork is so he just pulls the whole top off with the cork and everything Lies. and and i don't know why but it was kind of cool <laughs> I was like, I was kind of impressed. <laughs> like, you could have just pulled the cork out. out. I, 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 I think I may have to, uh, I might not be trying both of them today. Uh, I'm oh, going to have okay. to figure out that cork later. I'm probably going to need to go get a wrench or something to get it off. Uh, but it is not coming out, that's for sure. Oh, fair play. You know, honestly, Anthony was the person that we should probably uh, get the best comparison from anyway, because. He seemed to have liked the. Oh yeah, it was. He was. Oak. It was kind of his. Most. Yeah, he he liked that one. Now, to be fair, it wasn't a bad whiskey by any means. Uh, it's not bad. <clears throat> now I will it's say this one. This one I I get much more have fun, like awkwardly enough. I think the lower proof and the added water kind of brings out a little bit more of that. Those like lighter acetone notes. I feel like the deeper yeah. caramel and wood smells came out so much more in the cast strength. It made it a much pleasant, much more pleasant nose for sure. Yeah, after my first sip, I'm starting to smell some sweetness in the normal 46. Mm. It also has a decent mouthfeel, but. 
Well, I, I can smell the corn now, suddenly. Yeah. But, um... Uh, there's something about it which just reminds me of normal maker's mark that I've had, which this isn't a normal maker's mark. Because the normal maker's mark... I, well, they do they have the have same mash course. bill. This has to do with the finishing with French oak, which kind of softens oh, okay. up the flavor. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot of that, that weedy corn. It actually is, in some ways, it, it, it's, e it's even more you know, one note than the cask strength, I feel. For sure. And what's weird is it kind of reminds me of a rye on the flavor side like on the, on the on the taste you feel like it burns a little bit more it's a little bit more peppery yeah i can it see burns that. okay it's just it's kind of sharp like there's um this is still the French there's the right? yeah it's still the flavor. french oak. okay there's a flavor that's close to the tip of my tongue but like a little further back than that and it's just stuck there and it's not very pleasant I, funnily enough, I actually, I, I tend to enjoy that flavor just a little bit. And hmm. I, I attribute that kind of as these, uh, like, black pepper flavors. I, I also get it a lot if you've ever had, South Carolina has this, this red corn whiskey that they do. There's a brand called Palmetto, and I believe another one. And I, I know, it, like, kind of attributing it, maybe it's kind of this placebo effect of red winter wheat and red corn kind of sounding similar. But they both have this little bit of harshness, like sweet harshness to them, almost cinnamony, but sharper. Like if you took cinnamon and de-sweetened it a little bit. Mm, like almost like a bitter yeah interesting Ooh. dear listener if you may have been noticing i am not offering any tasting notes and or offering my said opinion about said spirits but allow me to enlighten you i did not buy it for i was not <laughs> you, able to get home in time wait but wait <laughs> you could have some of your one from last week and we'd complete the trifecta I could. Because Eric so has the new one. I have both. <laughs> it is okay. I poured so well, I, I have I have a little bit here. So I did get the 46 um uh, Oh you do oaked in there. So nice. I'm tasting that now. We can talk about that one because I just tried that again and it's just so much better. Oh yeah. Really? I, I like the so, so much the cast strength is the the extra strength from having that higher proof mm -hmm. does a number of things for this whiskey. One, you get so much more of that wood flavor. Two, the nose is so much more pleasant. You get much more of that vanilla, caramel, like sweetness and less of the mm -hmm. corn sweetness. And you get a little bit, a lot more wood. It kind of softens the blow of the corn and acetone that you get in this one. And then on the flavor profile, it's much more evolved, right? The cast strength just has this evolution and nice upfront flavors that this one just doesn't quite have. You get, you're very much getting a corn, uh, Standard corn wheat milk, whiskey, uh, kind of, whiskey. kind of like a, uh, um, it reminds me a lot of a lighter, less woody version of a Weller's, for example. Ooh. Ooh. And I just can't get over the mouthfeel. Like, high-proof cask strength things, bourbons, might be something that i just need more of oh yeah i mean if you're looking for mouthful mm -hmm. and you, you don't want to pay thousands of dollars so you're not looking at like the antique collection <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll try this one at some point on this podcast but the stag jr is one of my favorites the what it's called stag jr it's by 
the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It uh-huh. is the same mash bill as George T. Stagg, which is one of their antique collection offerings. Um, it is amazing. It, it, it's hard to get it under 250 right now, but it That's is... a lot of money for a bottle there, buddy. It is a lot of money for a bottle. Um, however, it is entirely worth it. I think it has one of the best mouthfeels that you can get in a whiskey. And of course, the George T. Stag is just a better version of that and also has a phenomenal mouthfeel. Every single time you say mouthfeel, I feel like I should be making some form of sexual joke. Yep. Yep. Every time. I'm every like, time. Every, I like, every, like, it feels like it's almost as if I'm like in some kind of like, I know clipped into an alternate reality. And like, I'm just like, something isn't right. Like, he keeps saying that. And I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like,. <laughs> This ain't, this, this is just it's not copacetic. I, I, can't, I can't keep going on like this. Anyway, keep continuing. Speaking of, though, Speaking Sex of Education field. Season 4 just came out, by the way. Ah. My wife has been watching that. Man, I haven't so even good. finished, I haven't even uh, started on Season 2. I started Season 1 and I liked it. And I was like, this is really oh, good. Dude, I, it is. Yeah. I, I am the it's outlier over, here. Though. I started, no. I started Season 1 and didn't like it enough to get through Season 1. Oh. Um, but That's then okay. you know sometimes it's just not 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 for me. I don't know. I think I think you're not a fan of those. Uh, what do you call them? Coming Sympathetic, away. awkward shows. I could see that. I could see that. I yeah. I love quick witted, like mm-hmm. very tight dialogues that feel mm-hmm. relaxed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like those like things that are very uncomfortable or it's just like something's about to happen and everyone wants to look away and yeah. you're like, I'm just not going to watch. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. That's just, I, yeah. And there've been a lot of good shows lately, but, <laughs> but my wife loves but, yeah. that one. Very like I've heard great things. But yeah, overall the 46, not bad, especially because it's. I don't think it costs that much. I can't remember now. Yeah, the base the 46. forty-six is. Like, I want to say it's forty bucks or so. Hmm. You know, at the forty-dollar price range. I, I well, I no, actually, it. it's below that. It's thirty-two dollars, at Damn. my local total one. Now. At thirty-two dollars, this isn't a bad daily drinker. I could I could see this as something yeah. that you have with dinner every now and then, and it's not too overpowering. It's mellow. It's got a nice sweet hint to it from seventy percent corn in the mash. You know, it is definitely not an unpleasant drink. Um, but I think. Depending on your price range, if you can upgrade to the cast strength, that's like where it's at. I think the cast strength is the the big brother version of this that you know is, is really nice. Graduating college type of deal. Yeah, definitely. And if, but unfortunately, if you're like me and you have my palate, it's not worth it because that taste <laughs> that Eric liked, I don't. That like. Almost at the tip of the tongue, but a little bit further back, it tastes kind of bad. And that's, I think, the flavor that has turned me off of Maker's Mark for the longest time. And Mm. so I will drink this Maker's Mark cask strength any day. I really like that. It doesn't do that weird thing to me. But there is something that happens, and I just can't. It's just not enjoyable. Yeah. It's like a, a sweet bitterness, almost like tannin type of this might be middle flavor the same it might be the same thing that happens to me with bourbon because you say it's sweet and and if we're describing the same part of our tongue i unfortunately don't get sweet i only get the bitter i see and, and maybe I could, that's why I, I can't drink beers and i almost think about that like it, it i could 100 percent see this being having like a little bit of a honey flavor with a tannin bitter middle ground that you transition to 
and then it leaves your mouth very dry afterwards with like a bitter dryness. So it, it, like mm -hmm. the whole the whole evolution of this drink in my mouth kind of goes up front, light honey, black pepper, spicy type of flavor. And then it immediately kind of transitions into this very tannin bitterness, almost like the bitterness you'd get from a beer. Mm -hmm. And then it transitions into your mouth kind of drying up, almost like you're salivating at the edges, but not on the tongue. Mm -hmm. And that flavor there almost has like, you've chewed out all the flavor of bubblegum type of deal. Brain blast. Yeah. Mm. I can table this. Maybe it's a bad idea. So we Got don't it. need to talk about it right now. <laughs> but perhaps we incorporate some of those smelly things that help you train your palate someday. Oh. Because describing things that I wish I could taste and I wish I could smell, but I don't. I can see. Now, sucks. here's the thing. Here's <laughs> the thing. I do say all of that. And I do taste all of those things. But this whiskey is not as evolved as last week's whiskey. There are a lot of very, very subtle hints of these flavors. But this is very much a light bourbon. With, if I were to describe this to somebody who had never drank bourbon before, I would say you're going to get a lot of acetone up front. It's going to be very hot right, yeah. off the, right off the gate. Off the jump, yeah. And then you're going to get kind of what tastes like uh, almost corn syrupy sweetness. Okay. Right? And then it's going to leave your mouth dry with a little bit of bitterness. Right? Yep. Like the other flavors are there, but those are not the main. Like that, that isn't how you would describe it to in layman's terms, you know? Yeah, I'm just really glad that. Go ahead. No, you go. I'm just really glad that uh, what's his name? Not Bill. I guess it is Bill. It would be Bill. The the original guy was Bill. So Bill the, the original the, the Bill Junior actually added the French oak staves. He was the one who did that. Good job, Bill. Yeah. Junior. But on the bo on my bottle, it says that their distillery team swore up and down that he had to try it at at cask strength. Yeah. It took a while for them to convince him because 94 is a sweet spot for him. Oh, Not man. me. No. I, I, so, I'm so glad that they did. And here's the thing. As you go up in proof, you're going to get more of that viscous, uh, syrupy mouthfeel. And it's going to coat your mouth so much better usually with that higher proof. And so I tend to find that if you can handle the heat, and you can kind of work through like those acetone flavors that a lot of people get off the gate. And there are techniques to kind of like getting through that. A lot of that is through your nose, right? So if you, if you do oh, the yeah, technique yeah. where you like breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth until you stop smelling the acetone, right? It unlocks the universe. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to enjoy these barrel proof and cast strength whiskeys a lot more as long as the flavors are kind of in line with your flavors. And uh, the other thing is you can always deproof yourself and find a perfect spot. So like these two whiskeys are the exact same whiskey, right? They're blended to taste very, very similarly. So that's an theoretically, if you took the cast strength and added enough water, you're not going to have the same uh kentucky water that is supposed you know limestone filtered type of deal but if you added some water to this cast strength theoretically you're going to get close to this french oak 46 non-cast strength and so what that means is if you buy this cast strength and you add a few drops of water you can add water to the place you like it but you can never take this 46 and increase the proof yeah, yeah. In, in the way that it will taste like the cast strength, right? 
It is as strong as it's going to be. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. That's another thing that eventually we got to do. I think, I'm guessing Nat also, but Nat and I probably need those droppers. Eric has like these fancy. Yeah, I have a Glen dropper. Cairn dropper. There's a name for It'll it. It'll drop like one drop of water yeah. into your bourbon so that you don't overly adjust it saturate your uh your yeah. alcohol with water yeah that makes sense yeah. you yeah. add like a few and now i for that small amount of water what you're really doing is you're breaking up the oils on the surface and breaking up those oils causes more smells to occur and mm. you yeah. are deproofing it a little bit but mostly you're getting a different smell which is going to make it taste different you know like 60 percent of your taste is smell that makes sense. What I want to do is find out how late my total wine store delivers whiskey. Are you going to try to get this <laughs> delivered before the podcast ends? No. no. Oh. <laughs> no. I was that like, would be an incredible like, city be insane. Perk right there. That'd be <laughs> insane. insane. Yeah, so apparently the total wine that's close to me is like, hey, yeah, we still deliver. We actually delivered to you with, like, within two hours. I was like, bad. So I will say, I've had Drizzly deliver me whiskey in less than an hour before. That's insane. Wow. That's nuts. Now, it isn't all the time. Sometimes they take a bit, but I have had it occur in less than an hour. Disgusting. So, so yeah, I, I guess that would sum up kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, it's not a bad daily drinker, but I really, I agree with Anthony. If I'm looking for this flavor profile... You'd go with the, the French oak. Then I'm going the cast strength. Yeah. They're both French oak. But you know what I mean. The cast strength yes. French oak. Yes. Yeah, yeah. For anyone struggling like me, <clears throat> after about 20 sniffs and blows through their mouth, <laughs> I was able to smell something. <laughs> and then on the tip of the tongue, I think I, I think I tasted some honey. Okay. But unfortunately, that bitterness still came in Oof. and overpowered me. It always happens at the very end too. Yeah. Like you're like you feel like you're leading up into something, and then it's like, nah, bitch, <laughs> get out of here. Get out. Yeah, fuck off. You thought this was an alcohol? This ain't juice. <laughs> <laughs> you're done. You're done, son. Uh, so, segueing into our. Well, that's right. We don't have an ad break, so we'll go straight into the Anthony. What have you been playing <laughs> this week? <up. laughs> Man, I think I have only been able to play one game. What's that? Okay. And that's Trackmania. Dude! Addict. Addict. Actual coke addict. Yeah, right? <laughs> like and unfortunately... S- snort that, the, the, you know, rubber straight those. in. Get it right. Look, it is a challenge, okay? I have I have still not been able to beat these tracks. Oh man. I, and and I for anybody cannot. for anybody that knows, like I I have seen Anthony play Trackmania before. He's like pretty good at Trackmania. So like not bad. Yeah. Not bad. So and when I beat bad, you know when I beat a track, it's like you're in the top two hundred and fifty for North Carolina. I'm like, that makes me feel kind of good. Back in my day, I used to be top. North, North Carolina people. only has about two hundred and fifty people in it, though. So. Go, Eric. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Uh, and for any listeners from North Carolina, um, welcome to the two hundred and fifty. <laughs> my graduating class was the size of your entire town <laughs> yeah i've been i've been playing the game called uh chop wood literally getting ready for winter oh, up here right. in the mountains I i've been chopping just, a lot of that's wood. right you've actually been chopping wood oh my I can god send you, Matt, pictures. you, you have chopping. to understand like electricity <laughs> hasn't been invented there it hasn't wow. you see you see this yellow light wow. That's oil lanterns. No, don't lie to me. <laughs> don't fuck with me. How dare that, you? That, that is inset oil lanterns in the ceiling. Oh, man. Those aren't lights. How dare you take advantage of me <laughs> like that? No joke, How though. You? I have an oil boiler. An oil boiler? I have I don't even a like saying giant. That. That disgusting. I have a giant thing. Matt, like, you know, you know, propane tanks, like big ass propane tanks. Propane. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like one of those, but thick. Like, it didn't go on a diet. And it's full of oil. So you're saying it's like a fat propane tank. It's fat. 
<laughs> yeah, because they don't do pressure. It's just chilling in there, just like in your okay. car. You just okay. pour it in. Well, other yeah. than the fact that you played the same game that you played last week, <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So much. yeah, unfortunately, I think that's the only game I played, but it, it's... I'm hoping to beat the summer tracks before the uh, fall tracks come out because i was about to say if you're about to say you're going to beat the summer tracks before summer ends well i'm i'm sorry anthony you failed. i know summer has ended <laughs> so i need to find I'm out when sure gonna... you've already failed yeah, last, the last day of summer is past welcome I hate to break it to you bitch <laughs> welcome to freezing cold weather i swear the last day of summer the minute it turned night it dropped to like 40 degrees it was I so really weird I hate that you say that and you're like upset about it. I'm not upset meanwhile, about it. It's just weird. It's it's weird. Meanwhile, <laughs> I am literally, it is nighttime. The sun has set and it is still in the 90s. Oh man. It's uh it's Fuck 62 yourself. for me right now. It's gonna I be 57 soon. Both of you. I uh you. I have a high of 72. Oh man. <sighs> I just miss like seasons that made sense. <laughs> You know, like yeah. Are you talking you before know. before you were born or before you moved Shut to Texas? Up. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! It was both the one and the same. I was born here. Ugh. Yeah, like, you just gotta move on over here. You know, yeah, move okay, this side I'll of the get, country. I'll get right on that. I'll get right <laughs> on that. I'm I'm working on it. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so, that's right. So what am I playing? Yeah, um, what have you yeah. been playing this week, Matt? So um, I picked up Dredge for a little bit okay i okay 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 so this game like hits all my buttons a little bit from yeah. watching like the surface level i haven't played it yet it is what is this game <laughs> what is this game other than it's a lovecraftian horror which by the way is, a- is like my favorite genre like what do you do? Like, what is the game actually? The game is you are slowly but surely like exposed to these small, like little short stories that exist in this grander world that all kind of fall into this greater Lovecraftian subplot of things just not being right uh, at, at night or whatever. Okay. So it starts you off in this like little like bay uh that you kind of fish uh you kind of fish around and the night falls and you're like okay i just go back to my harbor you know do all the rest of my stuff and then eventually the game was like no you gotta sail during night and you're like i don't (laughs) i don't i don't like it when you when it's like that because like it's scary like i don't Uh want to do that and so like you do it the first time it's like oh that's not it's not too bad but you're always staying like within the bay and so eventually the game's like now you gotta leave the bay bitch and you don't want to leave the bay because you've seen stuff kind of moving off in the distance as the night as night comes like goes okay. by so you're so you're constantly trying to tell like hype yourself up to go out and do stuff and then eventually you start running into things that kind of terrify you uh you have a sanity uh meter that pretty much operates like an eye in the top of the uh screen in the middle and when it's when it's freaking out you're freaking out um okay and i will say that the the beginning of the game is terrifying uh for the first like hour maybe two and then afterwards it gets a little like it it doesn't get scarier like you, you i get, see it, it okay. gets more in, it gets more involved with the fishing game and like the story yeah but afterwards i'm like okay the terror is gone for me like i, I, I get it Th- things are in the water whatever and that's you'll and... still scream you'll still be terrified okay <laughs> i'm 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 in for it. It, it overwhelmingly positive games on steam are rarely mm-hmm. bad by any means and oh yeah i i'm excited to uh I that has been on my list to try for quite a while now for it is a few months. really good. I am yeah, also yeah, I'm have to try. I, well I think I got to watch you stream that like a few months ago. So like what brought you back to it? I yeah. saw somebody playing it and they were just like, oh they were like, Oh my god, why is it so scary? And I was like, it's not scary. And then I went back to it, I was like, Okay, it's kinda well, it's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> it's a little scary. I don't know what you're talking about, but it's a little scary. It's, it's only because like there's moments in the game where you're like, Okay, I've seen everything that you can throw at me. I'm not really scared of the dark anymore. I can get from point A to point B. And then you go through these like long stretches of time 
where you're in between harbors in on different islands and you have to get from one harbor to the next and just random shit starts happening around you and you can't stop it and like sometimes you don't even know where it's coming from mm-hmm. um there's something that you got that you'll uh run into pretty early there's a boat that will that'll be cruising out in the distance and it'll honk and you if you don't honk back it knows it, it it'll like follow you mm. oh fuck like it'll that that's so creepy. It and like it'll go and like if you honk back and turn your lights off you're fine Oh. because it just goes by yeah no but, if, but like if you don't and you start like f- like sailing anywhere it follows you like and hunts Oof. you down Oof. dude i feel like the guy that made this game grew up on a fishing boat he had a little bit of paranoia i could see that a little and bit. he was like i'm gonna share that porn- paranoia with everybody with yeah. everybody i'm also thinking of picking up path of exile have you wait a second have you wait, you path played of path of exile with us right i did not play path of exile with y'all have you ever played i have never played path of exile Holy oh man shit. can we join you do on not, this can we play do not look up a guide i i agree i feel like i need but to i also so i also overwhelming but, it'll make you mm, stop playing yeah but anthony this is not what we're talking about like he's gonna look up a guy okay. like let's I'm let's gonna be look real this, hey fuck you Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but i do agree i do tend to agree but i also know that you're not you're going to look up a guy yes but absolutely. W- what i would say <laughs> uh-huh is that you are kind of doing yourself a disservice I if would I instead, mm. I would instead take. Pretend just, no one's ever played this game ever, and you're the first person to ever play. No, 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 no. I wouldn't say that. What I would do is I would go and look up a guide for a class that you want to play. Okay. I said guide, but do not follow it. Go and look at the main abilities that you need from the skill tree just the main ones the big there there are like small bubbles and big bubbles on the skill tree (laughs) look at the big bubbles write Uh them down and then Uh never look at the guide again (laughs) because because essentially what that'll do is that'll ensure that you have a good enough build to probably go through the entirety of the content of the game the game is not so difficult that your bot guide needs to be perfect. Like you mm. don't need to be min-maxing this game to beat the entirety of the game. And if it's a guide that is popular on the forum, those big bubbles will simply be enough to carry you through so that you don't, you know, screw over your build. But what mm. it'll allow you to do is make some decisions of how you get to these big bubbles. It may not be what the guide big is. Bubbles. Big bubbles. Yes, yeah. big bubbles. Big but, bubbles. Anyway. but it What's won't it? give you the equipment stuff. Like, you won't care about the equipment. You'll just find what you find. You won't care about the gyms. Mm-hmm. You'll be like, mm-hmm. I want to do this, right? And all you have to do is be like, hey, this is a lightning build. I'm going to find lightning spells. And zap some shit. And zap some shit with these special skill tree abilities that seem to do lightning stuff okay. and that'll that'll make it so you don't have to sit there and like wander around the tree for hours you'll be like i need this bubble this bubble this bubble i'm gonna work my way to them but okay. it also it'll allow you some freedom to kind of like w- stumble through the game a little bit which i guarantee mm. will add some fun to the the campaign which gotcha is arguably the the best done ARPG, ARPG campaign so i've heard so i in heard. existence like yeah. the tin act it takes you straight into in game there aren't difficulties there aren't there's no bs i've heard that it's like the expansions though have like 
made Endgame into an, a completely different monstrosity. So the Endgame and the Shaper and all of those those in milestones are a totally different game. The campaign is amazing. It is super okay. fun, well worth doing. Okay. Once you get past the campaign, you get past Act 10, and you start moving, and you're like, I want to play in-game now. When you get to in-game, it becomes a min-maxing type of deal mm -hmm. where you're trying to optimize your time. Because essentially, to get to this final thing, you have to spend a lot of time grinding. Mm, and the more you. effective your build is at going faster through this faster the yeah. less time you have to spend on it. And this is not, this is a substantial amount of stuff and time that you have to do that gets significantly harder. And the closer you get to this in milestone, the less variation you can have in a non-perfect version of your build to actually mm -hmm. do it. And it's like getting close to this, this limit of your build. Mm -hmm. I would argue there are, like 90% of builds can do this. But the in game is all about min maxing that particular that build. Yeah. And I will say that the campaign is where most of the salt is. I would say, I would argue 99% of the player base that goes through Path of Exile is trying to go through the campaign in a fun, interesting build. And when they get to Act 10 and they're beating this boss, and they're doing all their combos and stuff, that is super satisfying. Mm -hmm. And I think that is good enough for most people. And then in in-game, you're either looking up a build exactly, or a more enjoyable way to do the in-game... discover something else. Is Well, not even discover something else. It's to take your build and rerun it through the campaign and tweaking it slowly over time until you can tweak that particular build enough that mm -hmm. you get to that limit. And it's like doing so, an approach function in Capitalist. You're thinking Capitalist. of playing it, right? You haven't played it yet? I haven't played it yet. 100% so, we should play it. A great analogy I've heard is that Path of Exile is like Tarkov and its oh, complexity no. capabilities. Oh no. So just like Tarkov, Tarkov is going to be overwhelming and insane, but you could just play it if you can get a that's away from that yeah same thing with exile yeah. you could just play it but there's an immense level of complexity like eric was just describing yeah i would I also would argue that. that your first character no matter what you do can get the final milestone so trying to min max your first character is also useless you could follow a guide to the t and, and still that guide could depend on a random item drop that is has the perfect stat to be able to get to to uh, like that final mile, and mm -hmm. you, if you're missing one, two, three of those items because either you can't afford it or grinding your for it, dead. you're never dead. It's not that your build's dead. Your build's gonna make it ninety nine point nine percent of the way there. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't think it's very feasible for a new player on their first playthrough of the full game to be able mm -hmm. to make it to the final mile. Got it. And so you trying know, but, to min-max your first time through is just not worthwhile, in my opinion. It's more of a dick around, try a build that seems fun, find an ability that you like, use it and take it as far as you can, and then be like, I understand the game now. Do I want to min-max this and try to beat this final milestone? If yes, restart the game, try a new build, Yeah. try new stuff out, see what abilities are good and really get into it and like five or six playthroughs through you're going to have enough knowledge to know what's fun because here's the other thing it's going to take you like 100 hours to do this yeah, so even if you follow a I build to learn this goddamn game i am telling you that for to have fun and have an awesome time in this game uh, you have to do no learning. Just go through and play through it, and you'll have a ton of fun. It's the best RPG. It is the best ARPG on the market right so, now. So then tell me nothing so, else. Yeah. The, the biggest thing I would tell anybody that might be susceptible to overwhelm like me is don't look at the whole fucking tree, because when you look at the skill tree, it lets you see 
everything. It lets you. It shares the skill tree with every single class, and every class starts at a different spot. So just take your starting spot and only look at what's available. <laughs> just look one step just ahead. Don't don't, don't, just don't don't look five hundred steps ahead because when you do, you're gonna be like, "Oh shit, how do I get there?" And yeah. you're gonna be like, "Fuck, I don't even want to do this anymore." And that's Makes something sense. that I think Diablo Four might help people with because Diablo, Diablo 4, Four definitely took from Path of Exile with the some of that style. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, when you go to Path of Exile and if you try to ingest the <laughs> insane amount of skill tree that exists, a lot of people like me will be like. Well, ah, uh, fuck. So Nat, you I know I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, you know the mm. tree that you get when you get to level fifty or whatever it is in um, Diablo Four. Yeah. Right? So yeah, that's literally the skill tree for uh, Path of Exile. Not exactly. I would consider it as you have. It, it's kind of a mix. And I know the abilities are done differently in Path of Exile because it's a gym system. And some people listening to the podcast might flame me for saying this. But I would argue that it's a mix of this Diablo 4 50 plus system with your abilities from 50 and below, like that skill tree, being in between certain parts of the secondary skill tree. It's like combining both of them so that you unlock... Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it's it. It's like, oh, I unlock systems, exactly. Like it's like, okay. oh, I increase my agility by five. Now I get one new rank in my fireball. Oh, I Got increase it. this by five. Now I get my second rank in fireball. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's not entirely how it works, but that is a closer. That's the closest you can probably compare. Yeah. It to. Got yeah. you. All right, I'll check it out. Uh, my last game. Super fun. Uh, is Sea of Stars. Oh, and yeah. it's it's fun. I haven't even gotten through the. <gasps> yeah. I lied. It's fun. What else did you play, you dirty whore? I very briefly played Star Citizen. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, I bet you did. I flew anyway, my ship. Then it was great. Surprise. Not even a surprise. Anyway, yeah, I'm not surprised either. Eric, go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I'm about to get, uh, so you're about to get flamed as well. I'm about to get flamed. I think I, oh I think y'all God. are going to be uh, a little depressed with me. So what'd you do? So I, I had frequently over my time in life, uh, every now and then I, I get an itch or of nostalgia and no. needing to play one of my favorite and I would argue w- one of the Listeners best games ever made. Away. We're all Final <laughs> Fantasy. Final uh, Fantasy. No, al- although I cannot wait for the next part in Final Fantasy 7, but that is not what I played. Uh, so I have been waiting and I figured out that a new EverQuest server is coming up next no. week Ooh. so i have been i have been playing the project 1999 server on everquest um you disgust and me. it is it has been amazing it has been Dude, oh it's been so amazing it's been so wonderful i must inform you of the only thing i can think of when this man talks about everquest and that is the fact that he very much took some horribly high leveled monsters and made them invade a town and destroy all of the NPCs and kill everybody there. I have done that. And no one could live there anymore. I have done that, that was this man. You did that to this. people, Eric. I mean, you I, did that. Yeah. You did that. I, yeah. I have, I have done That's many things you. in EverQuest. Um, That's inside you, just naturally. Yeah, nobody man. told you. Nobody I, taught you to this, do that. This you game just is just. That. Amazing. And, and like, I, okay. And I, this is not even a nostalgia. I have played this game so much over the course of my life that nostalgia is not why I love this game. I truly think it is the 
best done social MMORPG uh, there is. And I love really punishing games. And EverQuest is a very, very punishing game. I'm not talking about the live server. The live servers are trivialized and over complicated. I, I truly love the, the original expansion up to like the Planes of Power expansion or the Lucklin expansion when I really played it back when I was young. And there's a new server called um, Project Quorm, which is coming out on October 1, Quorm. U-U-A-R-M, uh, which will actually be a, it'll do three expansions. It'll be nine months at each expansion. Um, it's starting with classic and then doing uh, ruins and then doing uh, Elias. Um, mm, so they're doing the old what World of Warcraft did. Yeah, it's oh, it's like a classic EverQuest. Now, I've played Project 1999, which is also a Velius server. Um and but this one has some benefits to it it has a few quality of life features that they've updated from like a ui perspective and some other things that will make it really I nice don't, i don't get how you guys can play these old games man i just uh, don't wait get wait it. wait and let's uh be very clear this is not uh you guys this is very strictly me okay, anthony right. anthony okay. can't play these games okay. Okay. Just putting it out okay. there. <laughs> like save his reputation at least. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, this is this is just a me. I, I grew up playing EverQuest before I ever started doing World of Warcraft. I raided in uh Bellius and Lucklin when I grew up. I love those games. So I hope I get the name right. But when is Pantheon coming out? Man, fuck that game. And everything pantheon so so uh, pantheon Do you know what pantheon is now uh, uh, let me let pantheon. i'll i'll let me tell you what pantheon is so pantheon um is an mmo done by a lot of the guys who did the original everquest everquest and mm -hmm. so this game pantheon rise of the fallen looks amazing they have they have a monetary backer, so they have money coming in. They have enough money to keep, and they are continuously working on this game. But man, they are taking for fucking ever. Like, I oh, remember yeah. looking oh. into this game and seeing alphas of it in 2016, 2017, right? <laughs> and they are still in a pre-alpha state. And here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The team as some of the best MMO people in the business working on it. They are trying to do a very old school social MMORPG, which I love. They're doing a lot of the things that they talk about in their forum posts, in their dev logs, and when they get like, they, they get uh, like co-carnage, they get him to play this game with them very frequently. And like everything looks really, really nice. But, but like, I don't see this game coming out anytime soon. And mm -hmm. there's always stuff to be done. And I feel like they're making progress, but it's like a snail's race. And I understand in the back end and stuff, they're probably doing a lot of things, but they are a relatively small team. We're talking about a team of about, I think there's, 35 Whoa. to 50 engineers but they are moving slow so and their, their their pledge website is kind of confusing oh it, no i found it i finally found it they're they're to spend 750 dollars to get pre-alpha testing access yeah yeah that the whole monetization is Bro. insane Bro. um <laughs> So and I feel like this game makes Star Citizen look kind of good. You're not wrong. I, you I hate that like you're not 15 wrong. 15 bucks I, and play Star Citizen right now. Anthony. And enjoy it to an extent. You're not wrong. And that upsets me at a core fundamental level. You know, that you're, you know that you're both wrong, right? <laughs> 
You know that you're. You, I mean, you know that you're both wrong. <laughs> but when so he, this is the best thing ever. Get out of here. Look, I'll, look, just, I'll just be I, on this side of the of the of the. I have given up games. <laughs> I like Anthony. Do not. I am not under the assumption that this game will finish in my lifetime. At this point, I I just don't know. <laughs> like, and I'm okay with that. You know why? Oh, because God. the original EverQuest is still releasing expansions. Like insane insane that's the only reason dude i remember like five years ago when eric was like constantly i can't wait for pantheon to come out i'm this is gonna be this game over i can't wait it's gonna be like one more year like one more year and it sounds just like star citizen it does it does one more year one more year and then five years later Maybe when my kids are 72 Dude, and it, I'm 99. Uh, it's so saddening <laughs> that this, and here's the biggest problem. Whenever I see them play this game in like a developer meeting and they go through a dungeon, I'm like, just release this shit. Like it, it's good <laughs> enough. Put it out. We can put it out. fix the rest of it. Like, like I don't understand what they're doing. They could literally just release one of the dungeons that they did. It took them like six hours to get through this dungeon. I was like, that's enough content. Release. <laughs> just, uh, just please. Like, just, what please. was it? We actually Shit, talked about guys. this not the go long ago, where it was like, uh, release a game in an episodic way. Yeah. And release dungeons in an episodic fashion, yeah. and you can just go in and play with your friends all together, rather yeah. than... Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna play the first 20 episodes, and because my one friend was on vacation for a few days, he didn't get to play with me. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's it's kind of maybe a good idea. Yeah, Might I be just a good idea. It is. It is very sad to me. I, I like honestly, Pantheon looks great. All the YouTube stuff, all the all the Twitch stuff, everything I've seen on it, it looks amazing. And the only uh, uh, well, the monetization is absolute utter bullshit. To be fair, like I don't know what I under I I like I don't know what they're. You thinking. understand where they're coming from? It's money, I, dude. I do, I do. They gotta run a company. They gotta run a business. Yeah. If they're getting pledges, like whatever, uh, like it's the the fact that you even have a pledge that says, "Hey, you can pay fifty month dollars a month for a year to get this pledge" is absolute bollocks to me. Like, what are we talking about? The fact that. There was people, there were people that could play through a dungeon of this game in like 2017, and we have literally not been able to like see whether or not there's going to be an alpha or beta state yet is insane. And I want this next social MMORPG. I love EverQuest. I am excited for this new EverQuest server. It is always but, super amazing to play through. But. But I have played through the first three or four expansions like four or five times on EverQuest. I would love to visit another world, another fantasy setting or another setting with that style of game. And there are, is no other company on the market that is trying to do it other than Pantheon. There is nobody trying to do it. The temptation of nostalgia being reinvented is just too tempting. But here's the, here's the thing, and, and, and this is where I was talking about previously. Like, I've played through EverQuest enough. This is not a nostalgia thing, I don't think. I think there is a market for this game, and I'll tell you why. Because classic hardcore has more people playing it and watching it on Twitch than retail WoW right now. Eric, wait. Eric. I just found Rainborn Pledge. We haven't had to pay our student loans for years, and we could have been paying a fraction of our student loans, $300 oh a month for 11 months, and we could have designed a quest line? We could have. With wow. the team? We could have. Wow. They also That's have way more valuable than paying for your student loans. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You can design a dungeon or a raid for $10,000. Just putting it out there. That's absurd. 
that. Yeah, I, I saw that, that one, but it doesn't have a monthly payment option. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't. You just got to do ten thousand bucks to straight up. It's like ten thousand dollars, and then you also had to develop it on your own. By the way, yeah, that's insane. yeah. We're gonna put but, you to work. Give us ten grand. Now you gotta work for us. That's just but, backwards as hell. Yeah, and it's really weird. People complain about Star Citizen when you pledge to star look, citizen look, you actually no, get a chance no, that you can let's anthony, enjoy anthony, anthony anthony i'm gonna put you back in the street jacket if you don't yeah act right. let's be clear i'm complaining about both of them <laughs> i'm you're complaining about this one too you're both wrong <laughs> but i back to my other point i truly don't think eq was is and still as a bunch of people playing it on live progression servers and private servers it has so many people playing it still to this day 30 years after being released jesus christ because no other mmo or game has this social interaction rpg aspect set of mechanics that this game did and here's the thing there's a lot of shit stuff about this game i've played it Dude. enough there is a lot of stuff that is absolutely bonkers where I'm like, ooh, this hasn't aged well. And I agree with those critiques. What I want is a game that says, man, there are mechanics here that lead to social interactions that are unique and novel and interesting. And we can improve some of these other things and round out the edges now that we couldn't before. And there is not a single company other than this one, Visionary Realms, that is trying or even attempting to look at this genre, which is super unfortunate because it is by far one of the most influential and highlight games of my life. And the only way to get that feeling or to experience that style of gameplay is to play this game, which is unfortunate, unfortunate in my opinion. And I hope Pantheon comes out in 40 years, but, you know, we'll see. Doubtful. Yeah. My friends, you're both addicted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is, uh, for better or for worse, that is all, I, that is all I've played. I'm, I'm leveling up a, uh, uh, well, a bard. I think I'm level 10? On Project 99 now. I just started a few days ago this weekend. I, I had a tournament and stuff this weekend, so I've only gotten about like uh, a little bit of... I haven't gotten that much playtime in, but I'm killing gnolls now for their fangs, doing the fang quest for anybody who's played EverQuest. That's pretty popular, Koinos. That's nobody. That's fine. They get out. They get out. Hook you. Are you playing on PC or PlayStation 2? Uh, well, so funnily enough, I'm playing on PC, but... The PS2 one was EverQuest Online Adventures, which I, which I also played. I had that game. I'm like one of the 200 people that had that game. Um, that game is actually insane for its time. Funnily enough, there's actually a Discord group that is trying to uh, emulate that game. Um, and they're making huge strides. So if anybody's interested in that, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but if you look up EverQuest Online Adventures emulation to that nature you'll find their discord really cool stuff that they're doing they're pretty much recreating the entire game from assets that they ripped off of like the cds but like none of the server logic is there so they've had to essentially rewrite server code as they remember it as it was and they're using like videos and all this type of stuff to rewrite these servers so that people can play what was by the way way ahead of its time like everquest online adventures they they it was a ps2 game where they tried to recreate everquest for the console audience one of the things that they did was they said hey console players don't want to sit and grind as much as like pc players for all of these things true so they made a bunch of quality of life improvements for like grinding, how you grind, what the interaction level is. Like they actually did a bunch of studies and found that on PC people were willing to spend like 
one and a half to two minutes in between pools and have a super nice experience. But in consoles, people wanted closer to like 20 to 40 seconds on average. And so they lowered the time in between different combat pools to 20 to, to 40 like seconds Interesting. to make it seem like it's going faster. And so they did all of these things to make the gameplay more diverse, specifically to cater to this console audience. But what they actually did was make a lot of those quality of life improvements that the original EverQuest should have had in some of these ways for this console game, which is pretty wild. So Okay. You awesome. know, I feel like it's a good time for a little bit of bonus content. Okay. When I was growing up, I had a PS2, luckily. And I thought it was really cool when I got this thing that allowed me to go online with it. I have like plugged this big brick into the back and I could play like God. Battlefield yeah. 2 online. It was yeah. great. But guess what? When I went to the <laughs> lake with Eric and his family, we're in the back of his dad's truck and he pulls out his PS2, plugs it into the truck, and flips up a massive screen. Okay, and Eric okay, and okay. I play a fucking Diablo style game for oh hours. God. And I was like, what is okay. going on? I'm, the best thing in my life. And it was amazing. They 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 won't be able to see this, but I'll I'll uh I'll I'll find this screen actually. Oh yeah, you here it is. Game? Here it is, here it is. I, I'm gonna but it was nuts. Like it was just I, I like Diablo two, it. but I mean, it was like Diablo three before Diablo three, where you could couch co-op and be in the same realm, the same area and fighting all the bosses. And it was just nuts. And then we had to oh. like, I, I don't think they figured out like so, the teleportation stuff. So I'd go one way, like yeah. I'd go left, and Eric would go right. And we'd be like, I, fuck you, I wanna go this way, but fuck you, I wanna go that way. And then Mark and, and Mary would be like, fuck you, shut the fuck up with your game. <laughs> We're watching the movie. They're watching a movie in the front two seats while driving. Sorry, I'm glad I'm alive. Uh, by, by, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know, that he's talking about it, like an EverQuest the EverQuest company for Sony Online Entertainment made a, a Diablo 2-esque ARPG clone that was way better than, like, Diablo 3 or Diablo 4. Just putting it, it out there. It was really good. It was actually a really good ARPG, but yes, we played that on... I, I just found the screen, so I'm gonna... Nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna open this on the uh, the stream so that the audience can see it here. Look, this is oh here here we go. This this right here is the the screen audience that would go and like slot onto the top of uh, a PS2. Oh God! Very very chill. Very cool. Very good time. Very good time. Very yeah. good time. It was cool. It was definitely cool. But yeah, that was when I. That was when I knew that I was poor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome, brother. To be fair, a lot of people didn't know that PS2 had that online brick. Like, yeah, I'm totally joking. That was something that I was like, that exists? Yeah, it was oh, wild. Yes, my friend. It's like it a relic wild. of ancient times. If you go and play like the Astros Playroom on the PlayStation 5, I don't even know if it shows up. Well, the they show some things that you're like, what's that? And I think, I, um, I, I, I think it might have been, I remember correctly, EverQuest Online Adventures had only had 32 and a half thousand total players over its lifetime. Oh, so that was, that, that was like 32,000 people that had to buy that stupid brick, pay an online subscription. <laughs> <laughs> just to play this game because it still was a subscription based MMO is just on your PlayStation 2. Ridiculous, dude. And never. It was phenomenal. Great game. Great game. I uh, I rated in that game back in the day. Nerd. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm rough, man. And then I I started wow and met, uh, you know, we met, met that. these idiots. <laughs> but, but yes, I I have everybody know. That Eric and I, once in a while, try to figure out is heals or tank for Paladin better. 
Ooh. And we oh, dueled man. for 30 minutes. Ooh. Neither of us dying. Until we both just said, fuck it. It's yeah. a draw. <laughs> yeah, that was that was rough. That was that, that was, was Burning Crusade. It was. It was in Burning Crusade. And we Back did it day, in, in Hellfire Peninsula. Yep. Outside of the main town there. For half a fucking hour. <laughs> yeah. And we, we literally couldn't kill each other. It's a good time, you know? It's good it's good fun. It's good fun. Oh my god. And I feel for y'all. But yeah, that's 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 been what I've been doing is playing uh the original uh everquest on the project 99 server i'm probably going to start a character up on project quorum when it comes out and uh might try to do a little epic challenge where i uh level up and get the the epic weapon Ooh. and then i'll probably not play that game for another you know three or four Five years. years there you go you Head know for you just just real quick just real, just real quick that's one of the things that pissed me off the most about Blizzard is how there's no such thing as legendary for them anymore. They're like, this is a legendary item. No, it's not, man. Oh, man. It's really not. Oh, man. Let me, not. let me tell you this. It's one of the coolest things in EverQuest. So in EverQuest, uh, by the way, because n- neither of you have really played EverQuest. EverQuest yeah. doesn't do a lot of questing. So the, the, the questing is very abstract. You have to like, a lot of it is grinding. Like back in the day, the, the quests were very like good when you got to them but you would have a quest at like level four and then you wouldn't have a quest till like level 16 and then you'd have a quest at like Bro, 40 right you're blowing my mind because i see ever quest as like forever questing but now you're th- making me think no ever quest no. means like every now and then there's uh, a quest yes wow. but when you do <laughs> these quests joke. yeah <laughs> God. But but Dog when you do jokes. these quests, quests they're like crazy long, crazy long. Uh, huh. And so when you finally get close to your max level, you start to work on every class as an epic quest. And at the end of it, you get your epic weapon, which essentially changes the game for your... Um, some are better than others, but essentially it makes something so different for your character that like... It changes the way you played after that point from before that point. And like for the bard, you have this idea of switching out instruments and then you get your epic and it counts as some of your instruments. And so now you don't have to do that anymore and you can focus on other stuff and it adds new abilities, right? And this quest is long and crazy. And you have to go travel the entirety of this world and spend dozens and dozens of hours doing different parts, grouping with different groups, going into different dungeons, killing different leaders, doing different raids, going to different planes of power, all to like complete this one epic quest. And I would argue that when when you, like in EverQuest, you can do all the raids and beat the last raid boss, and you could consider that the end of the game. But I really do feel like, like getting your epic weapon on a character is one of, if not the most rewarding quest in an MMORPG. Mm. And getting that feeling of how it changes that character from that point ever, it has such a like impactful feel it, it's really well done and really cool and a lot of mmos don't do that to the same degree like you had you some know. in classic wow for example the um you had ashbringer right and mm. ashbringer had this this feeling of that but only one person in each guild got to experience ashbringer back in original classic when it actually meant something right or wind seeker or wind seeker right but you only had like a few classes that could experience yeah. that feeling of this yeah. long epic crazy quest where everybody had to work together to get you yeah. that epic in yeah. everquest every class gets to have yeah. that feeling yeah and everybody mm-hmm. works toward this goal 
And so when you get there, everybody's like, dude, you're working on your epic. Dude, we'll get a group together. Like, let's, let's, we're let's doing go. this right. Let's go get this epic. Like, everybody wants to help each other get their epics because that's like the game is getting that you, epic. You know, you give me an idea where it's like in the past when we we're, I mean, and even now for people that are like high schoolers or middle schoolers and you've got all the time in the world, you can work towards something like that that takes just a ton of time and you put so much more time in that you get the reward. But nowadays, for people with jobs and families and stuff like that, it would be so cool if we had just a skill-based thing, like the most insane jump puzzle in the world that nobody can complete. But if I complete it, I get the actual legendary item that changes the game for me and people can envy that awesome thing. And maybe it only took me 15 minutes because I'm that coordinated or something or that lucky. So or whatever. I, would, I, would I maybe think me that that could be part of it, but you're having a jump puzzle be a key to like a legendary well, item, the, the level of intensity yeah. that would, it would require for what I, what I think would be tantamount to Eric's story would be nigh on impossible on a WAS on, on a. Yeah, so, well, I mean, like, so for a better example, and like maybe a, a game like WoW would be like if you're a tank and you only took 1% damage or something like that for the entire raid. And that's like insane. Like, how did you mitigate that much damage that you only lost that much health? Holy shit, you did great as a tank. Mm -hmm. Here's your reward, you know? Just like stuff like that. Jumping puzzle is just the first thing I could think of that was like that would be ill ish true. based. I see what you mean. Like, so DPS person, I dealt that much damage. Boom, reward. And you, people try to work for it. And they, because they're trying to work for it, they become better teammates at the game. At the yeah. game. So yeah. I do, I do like that. And I, I wouldn't want to take anything away from that idea, but I think there is this level of social interaction and time investiture that is required that makes these quests that I'm talking about so special that I think would be lost on a skill-based thing. Not that I don't agree we should have the skill-based thing, but there is something special about the bonds and interactions that you go through mm -hmm. while getting these things and investing the time into getting those things that is so important to how satisfying and rewarding the thing is because EverQuest where we're like wow and world of warcraft and other mmos don't do a really good job my opinion is that mmorpgs have this idea of there is a little bit of skill based like for example in everquest playing a bard is really really difficult you have to have a lot of knowledge and this the more intelligent you are the more you know about the mobs the more information you have and the better you are in navigating your abilities through each given situation makes you a better bard. Like there is a super high skill ceiling to this idea. And that has this cool benefit of increasing your social interactions in EverQuest that in other MMOs, it doesn't translate as well. But when it comes down to it, the thing that is special about MMOs is that you invest some amount of time and you get some reward. And I feel like a lot of newer MMOs and MMOs in general, excluding a few rare edge cases like Ashbringer and some other things like that, you invest a lot of this time and the reward isn't really that satisfying. I feel like EverQuest does the best job out of any MMO that I've played at saying, hey, you're going to invest a lot of time and sure, we have some shitty mechanics that make you spend more time in this game for not a lot of reason. But when they pay out in EverQuest, the payout feels satisfying. And I don't get that feeling from a lot of MMOs in the same way anymore. I, you know, I just feel like those are like two very different. They are. They are. I 100% agree. Like, 
I agree that the time expenditure reward thing is important and amazing. If you, like, if I could retire right now and do that, I would love to do that. Or if I was just great. a streamer and I could do that, yeah. I would love to do that. That would be great. 100%. But in my current life, I can't do that. So, yeah. I so you value those skill-based like, things. Yeah. But I think I would love to be like Carito in Sword Art Online and just earn it, you know, just be like, I'm sorry, my reaction time is faster than yours. And because of that, I get to dual wield. Nobody else can. Sorry. Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying that isn't cool. Like there isn't a good aspect to that. I'm just saying the, um, the things that are special about EverQuest definitely aren't for those reasons. They aren't doing that in the same way that you're mm -hmm. talking about. Like it is very much a, just a good implementation of investiture and reward that isn't seen in a lot of other MMOs in that investiture is surrounded by an environment that just encourages cool, interesting, influential social interactions. And that is how you play the game. Like more, the social interaction leads to doing better, which leads to you overcoming more difficult encounters which leads to you being able to do things like your epic quest. Right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Kurito would do it all by himself. No social attractions. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not saying that isn't <laughs> interesting or cool. Just two very different things. Yeah, exactly. I agree. They're just very, two very different things. And I would just say, like, if there was a game that did both really well, I'd be 100% on board with that. Yeah, you just have to, you know, put on your device and get stuck without a logout button into a new world. Because there were people that invested a lot of time and were successful, but Carito was like, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Nats, we lost Nat. Nats, Nats out. <laughs> oh, God. Friends. And with that, friends <laughs> what are we doing this uh, uh for next week i don't know but hopefully we'll see each other next week but yeah before we discuss off podcast about next week <laughs> we'll wrap it up there <laughs> and leave them in suspense i've been boardman also Anthony. And I've been Eric and Asafo. Either I've or. been Matt and Pickle. Yeah, you don't. You lost. You're, you're second muse now, my dude. Oh, no. Okay, I've been that. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you're getting. Uh, to be fair, I rarely get my username anymore because anime, but. Yeah, that's fair. I yeah. mean. Okay. To be fair, your name is now. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna fall down that hole right now. I've been Nathaniel and uh, Second Muse. We'll see you in the next one. We'll see yeah. you next time. Peace. <laughs>